When I first introduced it, people didn't really know what to make of it. But it's really grown and people are raving about it. If that is seriously a metal tray with a bit of grass in it. It's a grass pea blanket. It's a pea blanket. Rebecca's product has the dragon's attention. Can her pitch keep their interest? Hello, dragons. My name is Rebecca, and I'm the founder and director of Piddle Patch, the fresh grass toilet your dog will love. I'm here today asking for 50,000 pounds in exchange for 10% of my business. Dog owners want the best for their dogs. And thankfully, there are a lot of products to choose from. That is, except when it comes to the important task of house training your dog. Currently, the most commonly used solution is the puppy pee pad. This is often a single-use product, and it's mass-produced in factories using harsh chemicals and plastics. Piddle Patch is the natural solution and the UK's first and only soil-free real grass dog toilet. I'd like to take a moment and show you a quick demonstration. So when you apply liquid to a puppy pad, it sits on top and you're going to be able to see and smell that until you throw it into the bin. In contrast, when you pour liquid onto a piddle patch, it absorbs into the thick root system. And this is something that will really help to ensure that there are no smells and you don't need to throw it into the bin anywhere near as frequently as you do with a puppy pad. Thank you very much for your time. And you've got some samples in your box. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. An environmentally friendly puppy training toilet is the product Rebecca Sloan is pitching. It's available as a one-time purchase or on subscription. She's seeking £50,000 for a 10% stake in her company. Peter Jones is the owner of three dogs, and he wants to get straight down to business. Rebecca, you described eloquently how it works when they wee, but what happens if you get a really big poo on there? You would remove of the waste and dispose of it just like you would do at the park. Not to be too graphic, what about the runny ones? Because a lot of the puppies get upset tummies. If your puppy does have an upset tummy, the best thing to do is to very carefully remove it. So I've got to with... lift it all up? I'm sure you can have someone do it for you. So. Yeah. <laughs> but is this for lazy people? It is absolutely not meant to be a replacement for dog walking. It's useful, especially if you live in somewhere like a high-rise apartment. It's not always possible to get your puppy down 10 flights of stairs. There is but I that... get that, but I don't think it's practical because if, you, if you're in that situation, your dog is going to poo and not just wee. Right. And, and then you've got a right old mess to clear up because you're down on your hands and knees scrubbing grass and you're not going to get rid of that stench or smell. This is really something that if you're looking to keep it uh, clean and you're looking to reuse it, it is possible with the right care. OK, so I just want to pick up on the cost. As a one-time product, it's £32.50. If you're buying it every week, it's £27.50. That's just crazy amount of money to spend on a grass bed. Basically, your invention, it costs more to manage what comes out of a dog than what goes in it. Cash is tight for most households. They can't afford the luxury of things like this. So your market is so tiny. It's people that love their pets too much and have got more money than cents. But it's not a business opportunity. So for that reason, I'm out. An unusually early exit, as an exasperated Peter Jones immediately poo-poos the canine concept. Stephen Bartlett is also the proud owner of a pooch, and it appears he's sniffed out some potential in Rebecca's puppy product. How many times could my little Pablo do a wee-wee on the pad versus the grass? Most of my customers on subscription change it every two weeks. However, some people actually get considerably longer. OK, so do you see this as a transitionary product? There are two markets for it. A lot of people buy it specifically for house training their puppy. Sure. And there is a secondary market of dogs that often live in apartments, and they might use it on a more ongoing basis. 
I completely understand this because I've got this problem. I'm the only dragon here that lives on the top floor of an apartment with a balcony, and we take our dog out twice a day, yeah. but that doesn't stop my dog needing to go at 1am in the morning sometimes. I completely get it, and I need one. Rebecca, Chuka, um, I've just got a puppy, so I know the problem. Don't get me wrong, I love the idea. And the first thing that comes into my mind is how can you commercialise it? How can you sell that for 9 99 So what stops me from having some sort of a film that you sold with holes where the grass comes out, they can absorb the wee, that the moment they wee, you just wee it up and put another... A little bit like, like the you mat down like there. The mat. Yes, like the but what I'm there. saying is, if you have that <laughs> holes in it, that you put on the grass so the, so the dog can smell the grass... But you understand the reason she's doing this is because she wants to get rid of single-use training mats. Mm. OK, let me change the scenario. If I had to create synthetic grass onto a, onto a waterproof foam that was machine washable and I could retail that for £15, would that be a winner? There are people who will be looking for those solutions, but ultimately they're still plastic solutions. But to a dog, whether it's synthetic or real grass, do you think that would make a difference? Absolutely. They've got millions of sensors in their noses. Of course they can tell the difference. So I think it's genius. A massive seal of approval from dog lover Deborah Meaden. As the only dragon in the den not to own a four-legged friend, does Sarah Davies have the same enthusiasm for the entrepreneur's innovation? Honestly, I thought this was going to be a little bit of a joke pitch. And I thought, well, it's a bit of grass in the house for the dog to go and have a piddle on. And you completely floored me. And do you know what? I think these tight dragons sat here, here you've just spent three grand on a dog. What's 20 quid? Because I really like the product. Thank you. This grass in a train. I'm sorry. This isn't happening. I am taking you really seriously, Rebecca. Thank you. Right. So how big do you expect the business to get? In 2021, I turned over £117,000. Next year, the turnover I'm expecting is 941000 Oh, great. With a net profit of 224000 Wow. The year after that, I'm expecting 1348000 in turnover with a net profit of 323000 Excellent. Um, I think you've got polarised views sitting here. You've got Peter who thinks it's the most ridiculous thing and you've got Stephen who would sign up right now if you would take his details. But I can see a real market opportunity. So, I would like to make you an offer. I'll give you all of the money, but for that I would want 30% of the business. Okay, thank you. Rebecca's punchy projections propel Sarah Davies to make an offer. Could this now spark a turf war in the den? There's lots I love about this. The sustainability side of it, that's really what interests me, because it drives me mad. The waste that goes on those blinking mats. So I, too, am going to make you an offer. But I'm not going to make it easy for you. I'm going to offer you all of the money, but I want 30% of the business. OK. Rebecca, so there's certain products you come across where you know they'll work on social media because you're able to demonstrate the value of this versus the alternative within 10 seconds. And this is one of those businesses. I think we've got an opportunity here to build a really big dog brand online. The minute you post a picture of any dog, they, they swarm in there like, you know, flies to a dog poop, right? So I am gonna make you an offer. I'm gonna offer you the 50,000 for 25% of your business. Rebecca, I'm a product person and I think out the box. Automatically, when I saw this, I said, what else can we add on to this? How can we grow the sales? That's the way I think. So I'm going to make you an offer. 
I'm going to offer you all the money, but I also want 25%. Rebecca, given that the lowest offer here is for 25% of the business, I would be willing to match that offer on the table. So why didn't you say 25% in the first place? Because the competitive nature meant that I didn't have to no. vote 25%, and I think 30% was a reasonable offer. Rebecca, no. can I just say, this is the power of influencer marketing, <laughs> which has been my business for a long time. So I've managed to influence all the other dragons to follow me. I'll tell you what I'll do as well. If Stephen wants to share Absolutely not. We don't, we don't need you. Fine, I will retract that. It was declined. Do you want to have a think? It's a free-for-all in the den, with four dragons vehemently marking their territory. Sarah Davies, Tuka Suleiman and Stephen Bartlett are all competing for a 25% share, while Deborah Meaden is holding strong for 30% equity. But all the offers are asking for way more than the 10% Rebecca's willing to give away. Will she accept their terms or push for a better deal? Thank you very much for all of your offers. I was wondering if it might be a possibility to do a clawback of equity once I've paid back your initial investment. What would you be proposing? Ideally, after paying back your initial investment, we could then make the equity 10%. So from my perspective, what you're asking me to do is put a ton of work in now, massively increase the value of your business, and when I've done that, give you it back. So I wouldn't quite go to where you are. However, I would be prepared to drop my equity stake to 15% if you return my investment within 24 months. Okay, thank you. Um, Rebecca, my issue is, right, is I don't want to take the money out of the business, especially in that growth phase. Um, if you hit the numbers that you've set out next year, my equity stake will just drop to 20%. If you put that 50,000 into marketing, we can make millions. Okay, thank you. I think you've got some great offers. I'm gonna stay where I am. Rebecca, look, uh, what you need is an uncomplicated offer, just a straight offer. So I'm willing to give you all of the money, 50,000 for 20%. Okay, thank you very much. I really do appreciate all of your feedback and all of your offers. Um, I'd like to accept your offer, Stephen. Yes! We're gonna sell so many pedal patches. Well done, Rebecca. I'm heartbroken. Well done. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Rebecca. You. Rebecca leaves the den with the 50,000 pounds she was seeking and the youngest ever dragon on her books. I can't believe this is happening. That was overwhelming to say the least. I genuinely can't wait to give my dog it. You've just invested in grass in a tray. This is exactly what I've always needed. Uh, well, I get it. Yeah, no, we you all get I mean? it. Yeah. That's why we all made an offer. Well, we didn't all get it. <laughs> all right, we got it. You're barking mad. <laughs> I'm really excited to be working with Stephen. I think that we're going to turn this into the household name, and I'm really excited to see what happens next. Rob and I were both teachers. We got our retirement package, and a lot of our friends have used that to build an extension in their kitchen or to travel overseas. We decided that we would invest this in a business. They're trying to look mean. But they really, they want to invest. <laughs> what do you think, matey? Who would you go for? You are the boss, after all. When it comes to pitching their product, Rob and Debbie certainly know their roles. He's brilliant on the numbers. And he likes me to do the fluffy stuff. It's not fluffy. <laughs> okay, are you just better at it than me? <laughs> I think it's a doggy backpack. <sighs> I've seen it all. Have you got your lucky underpants on? I have indeed. <laughs> but will the dragons see their doggy offering as anything more than a pet project? Good luck.
Hello, I'm Debbie. And I'm Rob. <laughs> and this is Maisie. <laughs> we are here today seeking a £35,000 investment in exchange for a 10% share of our business. If you've ever owned a dog, you'll know that your pockets are full of treats and poo bags and, well, all sorts of unmentionable stuff. <laughs> We wanted a bag that we could use when we were out on our walks. We looked online, we went to pet shops, we even went to Crufts, but we couldn't find anything. So we set about designing our own. And so was born the Barking Bag. The smart design includes a breathable side pocket, big enough to carry a water bottle. There's a poo bag dispenser. There's an easily accessible treat pocket. Uh, there's even a side pocket in which you can put the unmentionable stuff until you can reach somewhere safe to dispose of it. Now then, would you go and like to see these nice people over here? You have oh, some treats no. on your boxes. Go over there. Maisie. Go and see Peter. Sit. Paul. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> A range of multifunctional dog walking bags is the offering from husband and wife duo Rob Angel and Debbie Greaves. Shake a paw now and seal the deal. Sit, oh. sit Maisie. That's it. <laughs> ah. The entrepreneurs are asking for £35,000 in return for a 10% equity stake in their business. In a moment, we'd love to take your questions. But for now, it's time to take Maisie for a walk all the way to the lift. OK. Do you want to take it to the yeah, lift? Yeah, we'll take okay. it to the lift. All right. By combining fashion and pets, the pair have walked right into Tuka Suleiman's world. But it appears he's wondering who else is taking a bite out of the doggy bag market. OK, what's your competition? If I'm honest, Tuka, there isn't a great deal of competition out there. Because there's some competition. There isn't a comparable bag. Can I just there say, are... I'm a dog owner. I have a shoulder bag that I use. And I put yeah. everything in there. And I bring the toys, snacks, I bring the doggy bags, I bring all of the things you've put inside your bag, and I'm not using your product. So clearly there is competition, which is a bag. Yeah. I'm guessing your elevator pitch to the world is that this is more bespoke. The problem I then have, if that is your answer, and sorry for answering for yeah. you, is when I go on my dog walk, I have a style preference. And because you present this in a certain style, you would exclude me just on that basis. To Stephen's point, I think it's an interesting one because just visually looking at you now, you definitely look like a dog owner. Yeah. <laughs> I've got no problem with that. You know, I'm a proud dog owner. You, and, and that comes across. Yeah. People like different things, and I get that. But there's one or two features on our bag that you don't get on others. There's a place to carry a, you know, I bet that doesn't fit on your bag. It is designed for purpose. What is the demographic of your customers? And what age group? It varies, I have to say. The, the, the biggest chunk is between 20 and 40, that kind of age range. And when we went to our very first show, People were coming to our stand and they were saying, oh, I found you at last, we've been looking for you on Instagram. And I was going, what's Instagram? I didn't know. And when people <laughs> talked about TikTok, I thought it was a clock, you know, I wasn't <laughs> with it at all. I'll be honest, I really didn't know. I've, I've got to be honest as well, Debbie, I don't think a 20-year-old Instagram centric millennial is going to be wearing these bags. They are. I'm sure there's they one. Are. I'm no, sure there's, there's one. one. All the dog walkers are telling their friends. They're putting out Instagram feeds saying, this is me with my dog. I'm sure there's one or two. Yours is like a 10 out of 10 utility and a 4 out of 10 fashion. So you've given it a 4 out of 10. My mum's going to love this. Your mum? How old's your mum? She's only 58. OK, I'm a single 28-year-old guy trying to find a girlfriend. That's not going to help me. <laughs> my daughter's out the back. <laughs> 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 Stephen Bartlett may be looking for love, but his heart doesn't appear to have skipped to beat just yet over Debbie and Rob's range of bags. Retail king Tuka Suleiman now wants to focus on the cost of the canine accompaniment. This bag costs how much to make? Your best seller. Our best seller is um, the khaki the bags there. It would cost us eleven eighty five pounds. Yeah. That's expensive. There is an additional cost, obviously, with the freighting and the duty as well on top, and that would add probably another three pounds. Well, look, if you made that in volume in China... Yeah. Five, five six dollars? Yeah. So what do you sell it for? We sell that, uh, that particular bag for 35. 
Now, I've got four dogs, take them out for a walk regularly. Mm -hmm. The bit I actually really do like is where you can put your used poo bags because it drives me mad when you walk through the countryside oh. and see plastic bags hung on trees. I don't know who they think is going to clean up after them. It's generally me, but, but that drives me bananas. So that is a really nice feature. Yeah. And I think you're going to have a decent business here. But I don't think it's a big enough business to take on board an investor. It is very specific for very specific people and it's got too many reasons to discount people. And I'm afraid for that reason I won't be investing. I'm out. OK, thank you. Disappointment for Debbie and Rob as they lose their first dragon. And it appears Peter Jones has some concerns about the cash that's needed to really push their pooch proposition. I get the market, but you're going to have to have hundreds of thousands of pounds in your bank if you want to scale this business. But I congratulate you on creating a great business for you that will continue to do well. And particularly you, Debbie, your passion and energy um, is actually quite compelling for a business like this. You're absolutely right. I mean, Debbie fronts up the business. She is the face of Barking Bags. I'm the guy in the background doing all the accounts and the freighting and yeah. stuff like that. Every business needs somebody in the background to clear up the dog poo. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a quotable one. So I'm going to say I'm out, right. but thanks for coming in. Thank you. As much as I love you guys as entrepreneurs, I don't think it's an investable business for me based on my personal preferences and the scale of the market opportunity. So. I'm going to say I'm out, but I wish you the very best. Debbie and Rob's bag for dog walkers is struggling to collar any cash as two more dragons bow out of a deal. But it appears the queen of TV shopping, Sarah Davies, is wondering if she's spotted a possible pretender to her crown. Debbie, how have you found this experience today with all these cameras and how has that been for you? Well, it's it, it's unnerving, obviously. Um, we're passionate about the product. Oh, I Probably can see you're box. passionate. So you, you're kind of putting your baby out there and asking people to, to love it as much as you do. There might be a reason why Sarah's asking you how comfortable you are on television, so I should focus on that. So um, my mum and that demographic of customer, they do a lot of shopping, okay. watching TV. Yeah. This is a highly highly demonstrable product. Right, OK. And I, I think selling it off the shelf at retail is really difficult. Selling it in front of people, showing that passion, you nailing it. And honestly, I could have you on there next week if you had the stock, because it is absolutely that demographic. Does that sound like something you could do? It sounds scary as heck, but I'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you could do that. On that basis, I would like to make you an offer. Thank you. So I will offer you all of the money, all 35,000, but I would want 25% of the business. OK. OK. Sarah Davies sees a potentially profitable marriage of entrepreneurial passion and TV shopping and makes a bid for the business. Is the den sourcing and retail man, Tuka Suleiman, inclined to add this proposition to his burgeoning pet portfolio? I believe that you have a great brand. And I love Debbie's enthusiasm. Um, I think there's a lot of work to be done. If it hung in a shop on, on, on a tag, the hard sell. I think your sourcing needs to be looked at. Yeah. Um, could I just ask you a question before you say it? <laughs> you might. Yes. I just wondered whether you could open opportunities for us for new manufacturers. Well, it depends if we make you an offer. OK. Ooh. Two, could they want you? Yeah, I know. <laughs> look, look, look. I'm looking at this and say what's best for you. And I think the offer you've got is an amazing offer, especially when it means being on TV and showing the product. That's what it needs. So I'm not going to compete with Sarah, but I wish you all the best. I'm out. Thank you. He knows that he, he couldn't beat me. I just want to check you're OK with flying. Oh. Because, you know, when we've got the TV nailed here in the UK, there's plenty of other TV shopping channels all over the world. And we can prove everybody wrong, can't we? And we can prove everybody wrong. Do you want to go to the back wall and think about it between the two of you? Yeah. Well, we will do. Thank you. Yeah. 
Tuka Suleiman steps aside, leaving the entrepreneurs to ponder Sarah Davies' offer of a jet set lifestyle. What do you think? Great opportunity. It is a great opportunity, isn't it? But in exchange for the £35,000, she's asking for 25% of their business, more than double the share they wanted to give away. So we see if it will bunch to 20. You know? Yeah. Okay. You can speak. All right. Can the affable entrepreneurs claw back any equity? Well, thank you for your offer, Sarah. I really appreciate that. Um, is, is there any way nope. perhaps we could go? <laughs> That's a really good offer. I, I, I add a lot to the table, and I think 25% is a small price to pay for that. Yeah, we'd like to accept your offer. Well done. Thank you, Sarah. Good. Awesome. Good. Thank you. Good. Really good thank well you. Well done, guys. You did great. Well thank done. You. The entrepreneurs have done it, bagging themselves a £35,000 deal. Well done, Deb. It's so good at fronting it up. Oh, no, it was sure. It was the end of pants that did it. <laughs> <laughs> they head home to put Rob's good luck garment somewhere safe and ponder Debbie's new career in TV shopping. I might be travelling all over the world, selling bags. It's bizarre. I don't know what my family are going to make of it when I get home. We hope it doesn't go to your head, Debbie. No. <laughs> you become difficult to live with. <laughs> More difficult to live with. <laughs> At first, I thought you were barking mad, but it all no. makes sense to me. Yeah, perfect. perfect. She's perfect. going to be brilliant on TV, and I don't want any wisecracks of you, Mr Bartlett, when you see me out and about. Either me or my mum. <laughs> Hoping her King Charles Spaniel, Lola, will be on Doggy Best Behaviour tonight is Italian Nadia Laguel. I adore dogs and I think they're the best companion any person can have. We'll get you loads of treats after. <laughs> Growing up in Italy, we always had dogs in our family. When I moved to the UK at the first opportunity, I got Lola. Nadia's startup aims to wed going walkies with the web. As a dog owner, I definitely noticed there was something missing on the market. So I decided to build a service that all dog parents could use. The pooch-friendly proposition has already sparked speculation in the den. Rent a dog to have dinner with you. Dinnerdogs.com. We could call it Doggy Date. 50-50. I'm in. <laughs> the dragons appear to be in a playful mood. So can Nadia bring them to heel? Come on, Lola. Before parting them from their cash. Hello, dragons. This is Lola, and I'm Nadia, and we're the co-founders of Waget. Waget is the first dog-friendly online booking platform in the UK. We're here to seek £50,000 for 5.5% of our business. My background is in online reservations. I was the first salesperson in Europe for OpenTable, and then I was director of sales at BookerTable, which is now TripAdvisor business. When Lola came into my life, I realized how difficult it was to book places to go with your dog. When you looked online, the options were limited, and even when you found somewhere dog-friendly, you'd turn up and you'd be sat at the back next to the bins or asked to sit outside even if it was raining. And when it came to groomers, there was actually no way to book online. You'd have to call and they never answered because they were grooming. <laughs> so I thought there has to be a better way. There are now over 12 million uh, dog owners in the UK. And according to the Kennel Club, 98% of dog-friendly pub owners say that customers with dogs bring them better business. That's where Waggit comes in. Our website enables people to discover, find and book places to take their dog. So let me show you how it works. You can select groomers, pubs and bars, restaurants or taxis. You then put the time and area and then you click submit. After that, you get a selection of what's available, your preferences. You can select one and look at the description, if they have a doggy menu, for example, and all that information. You select the time and then you put in your details if they're not already in there. That's how simple it is. Lola and I are looking for a dog-friendly dragon, and we know you all are, to join the Waggett pack. <laughs> a canine-compatible online platform for restaurant booking is the offering from Nadia Laguel. 
<laughs> who's seeking a £50,000 investment in return for a 5.5% share in her business. I don't think she wants to take any questions. <laughs> I think we should let Lola go if she doesn't want to be in the den. OK. Lola's work may be done, but Nadia's has only just begun. Peter Jones is first with the questions, and he's clearly intrigued by this entrepreneur's CV. Nadia. Yes. Your experience in the past is really interesting. Congratulations. Thank you. What do you believe in terms of scale with your experience? How are you going to achieve sort of growth for the business? The business model is interesting because having come from Open Table, the business model for reservation companies like that is transactional, so they charge per cover. But with us, it's more a benefit. It's a marketing channel for the restaurants to market to dog owners. So it will be promotions and so on. And there's so much we can do to a business, you know, offer, offering them more um, opportunity to, to market to dogs. There's, I mean, there's so many events. Restaurants can fill their quieter times at lunchtime with dog owners. And then the other side to monetize is once everyone falls in love and books through Wagget, the community side of it, so the consumers. Yeah, I get the advertising piece on there as you grow, but so how many people, do you have to register on this site or can I just use this as a search engine? You can just use it as a search engine. How does that help you grab a subscriber or build your data? How do you do that? You mean if you don't register? Yeah, if I can go on there and use similar to a Google search. The idea is the loyalty scheme will, in, will encourage people to register. What I'd like to do with Wagget is you can get points if you go near in a restaurant, if you book your groomer. OK, so you haven't got any registered users at the moment? No, I have. You have? How we many have, have you got? We have about 400. Nadia's website is already gaining traction. But the den's newest pet owner wants to discover exactly how she intends to convert dog-friendly days out into financial clout. Puppies, I, I've just got one. <gasps> so I know exactly uh, where you're coming from. OK, so the business model you've now told us, how will you make an income out of it? We will charge uh, operators, so restaurants, um, groomers and so on, a monthly subscription fee. It will be tiered. So tier one, tier two, tier three, depending on how much they want to market with us. I'm a restaurateur, so what will I have to pay on your subscription to enrol? So £10 uh, is a tier one subscription. £10 a month? Yeah. How many yeah. restaurants have you got signed up at the moment? Uh, 39. And the only way a restaurant can sign up is if they pay? Yes. So if I'm a visitor and I want to go for a restaurant, there's only 39 options I have in the United Kingdom at the moment? At the moment, yes. That's because you've put this huge barrier in the way of you achieving scale, which is you're charging every single restaurant to list. The reason why OpenTable, Yelp, and all these other websites have huge scale from day one is there's no resistance for a restaurant to join. You've created resistance, which means you have to now go around and knock on every restaurant's door to sign them up one by one. But I offered anyone who join three months free you must be the only person in the industry that's charging people to list beyond 90 days. There are a couple of others. At scale. And, and also, Open Table um, was charged a monthly fee as well. That's an add-on. They have a freemium model with the, the premium upside if you want it as a restaurant, which yeah. lists you higher, you get featured, etc., etc. Yeah. Right. If you want to get scale quickly, have a freemium model where every dog-friendly restaurant in the land can sign up and then charge them for better placement or else you're going to have to knock on every restaurant's door. So I think that's an existential risk to your model. Stephen Bartlett fears that Nadia could be barking up the wrong tree with her current business model. So will Sarah Davies see greater potential in her plans to harness the pooch-owning pound? Honestly, I think you've done a brilliant job getting to this point. There's clearly demand in the market. I think you've, you've come into the market at the exact right time when you've got all of these dog owners now flooding into the market and things are opening up, people are desperate to get out there. And obviously, you've got the, the proven track record. You've made this work for a couple of huge companies. So 
you know, all of that together suggests it could be a recipe for success. Thank you. How big does this have to be for this to become a credible proposition? 600, 700 restaurants. How many a day are you signing up at the moment? So we get about five or six a day, uh, a week, sorry. Five or six a week. Yeah, but what we want to do is really accelerate the business now. Um, we need marketing to push a bit more and we need the developers to improve a few things. Um, I build the website really quickly um, to, to get it up and, and see how much interest it would get. You built it? Well, I had it built. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know how to do coding. And you don't think you can get from the place you're at at the moment to that six, seven hundred without having an investment to improve the tech platform? I can get there, but it'll take me a lot longer. You're building a tech company here. You said that there's no one in your team that has built a tech company before. Well, I, I, my business partner and one of the investors is a friend of mine and he's a product manager and helped build a tech business and then exited. So he's the one who's helping me build the product. I would feel from my experience building tech companies that you'd need someone in-house that has yes. technical expertise. And if, you're, if you are going to go out to market and get investors, the first thing they're going to want to know is where's your technical co-founder? Who's the CTO? Yes, and, and that's what I want. With a background in hospitality, this entrepreneur knows her gourmet bites. But when it comes to mega bites, her lack of expertise is giving cause for concern. Now, the den's most ardent dog lover, with four canine companions of her own, wants to discover more about the business's competition. Nadia, what was your actual role at Open Table? I was sales. So, what does that website do to tell consumers about dogs? <clears throat> Open Table. Open Table. Open Table doesn't even have a tick box at the moment for, for dog-friendly ones. So where would I go now if I was looking for pet-friendly stuff? I mean, the way I used to do it is you put it in Google and just hope. And then it's always the same three or four that come up in my area. But I guess I'm trying to understand what your added value is. And I have a little bit of a worry for you. I think it is going to become a tick box. Any other site that just sells restaurants is just going to add that symbol and have a filter that brings it forward whenever you put a search in which I think is a great shame because, you know, you kind of spotted it first. You know? <laughs> but I'm afraid I, I worry about that for you. And, you know, going into investment with a worry for somebody is not a good idea. So I'm really sorry, Nadia, I won't be investing. Okay. I'm out. Thank you, Deborah. Disappointment for Nadia, who has lost her first dragon. Will a tech-savvy Peter Jones prove any more receptive to this entrepreneur's attempt to computerise canine hospitality? I like it. I think it's a really good idea. I'm slightly disappointed, though, with your background, that you haven't come in with a much bigger number of customers on there already. 39. I would have expected you to have said, I've got several hundred restaurants already on board, and I'm predicting by the end of this month, I'll have a thousand restaurants, 1500 next month. I'd expect much more of a pipeline of where it's going. So for that reason, I'm out, but good luck. Thank you. Nadia. Hi. So my worry is that you're just gonna shine such a big light on this that these other companies are gonna go, oh, look what we've been missing, guys. There's this huge business opportunity over here. If we just make our website a little bit more dog friendly, stick a couple of pictures of dogs on, get some testimonials, write a few blogs. Bob's your uncle, and we're all sorted, OK? You're going to raise awareness for then someone else to eat your dinner. So as sad as I am to say it, cos you seem lovely, I can't invest today and I'm out. I travel everywhere with my dog, and I felt the pain that you're trying to resolve. Completely get that. My issue is about the technical expertise within the team. And so with this type of business, I would want to have seen technical expertise in the core team to give me peace of mind that this team will iterate through all of the problems that I know they're going to encounter. And I haven't seen that today. So for that reason, I'm out. Four dragons have now bowed out. Only fashion tycoon Tuka Suleiman remains. 
is he prepared to trade the world of the catwalk for that of the dog walk? I think the idea is great. The way I see it is that you've got sort of three big challenges. First challenge really is to get your tech right and have good technical support. The second challenge is to get enough dog owners to use it. Mm -hmm. And the third challenge is to get enough restaurants. There's your three challenges. And on top of that, the main area is, is you know, the marketing. Because you know, what this really needs, if I have to be totally honest with you, this needs a million pounds thrown at it. And, and I, I think that your 50,000 ask is just a drop in the ocean. So I'm going to say to you, I wish you all the best, and I'm out. OK, thank you. Thanks, Nadia. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Nadia leaves the den without a deal. But despite the dog devotee's previous pedigree, the dragon's decision not to invest isn't proving a bone of contention. I just don't think it will work without as you say, huge resources, money and talent. At least a lot of money. Millions, you're right, Sue, millions. Next for Lola and I, we'll just continue adding um, businesses to Wagit, improving it, and, <laughs> and maybe one day we'll come back. 